uh, some of us, and all through the years, we, uh, you know, the kids and I, we spent a lot of time around mm -hmm. grandpa and mm -hmm. grandmother because they lived right uh, next door to us. Oh. Yeah. And so it was, we were very close. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, grandpa, you know, he was, uh, he was like the, the uh, regular dentist. We had a toothache. He'd, he'd pull out our teeth up. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and he had some, uh, he had some strength in those hands, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't have to smell the cigarettes because mm -hmm. he would smoke the cigarettes up to nothing. <laughs> right. And they were kind of, looked like they were kind of burning his lips. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think he was, uh, he had gotten adjusted to that or, uh, or sometimes uh, you get burned so much you don't feel it anymore. But he was a heavy smoker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he liked to joke a lot. You know, and he had a laugh you would never forget. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would enjoy a good, uh, a good laugh. You know, so uh, that was some of the things he would remember. And um, grandpa and grandmother had a smokehouse, and they would smoke uh, pork and beef. And uh, uh, and you could help with just. You know, you walk by the place and have the hickory chips and stuff in there and, you know, smoke them in the meat. Mm -hmm. And you could take some of the meat off and just eat it like it is. You know? Oh, no, it's all enough. Yeah. <laughs> and my grandmother, uh, she would milk the cows, you know, and she would uh, uh, make butter. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, happen. Yeah. Kind of churn. Okay. And, uh, old-fashioned life, mm -hmm. and she'd be up there, you know, just, you know, and you look at it after a while, and you see the butter, mm -hmm. and, uh, and she, she could make some very good butter cakes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and so, uh, it was, uh, it was, I called it, uh, country, healthy living, uh, something that a lot of people don't experience, especially um, city dwellers. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we had uh, a lot of land, and we had a lot of branches, and those were like waterways. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd have to, we, we would go swimming during the summer months, and you'd have to be careful moccasins, water moccasins. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we had uh, uh, we had the during the summer months we would have a just a uh, uh, a lot of bats. You know, they would fly around and be, you know, uh, they would, I think they would flourish on mosquitoes and all kinds of bugs and stuff, you know. Yeah. And you know, they, I didn't want to miss until years ahead uh, that uh, they had a sonar system because mm -hmm. they were blind. Mm -hmm. And anytime they got near something, they would pull away from it and it was crazy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, we would throw things at them and they would dodge it. They were quick, and you know we did a lot of uh, did a lot of farming. We had a lot of woodland, and uh, you know the kids, me and the kids, my brothers, we would just just go walking, you know, and just looking at everything. And we had those uh, we had uh, wild fruit that would grow in trees. They were called muscadines. Mm -hmm. And I learned uh, a, a bit on in life that uh, they could, uh, people could take muscadines and make wine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but they had a, you had, it, you, you had to climb trees to get the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
so that could be risky business mm -hmm. sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, they were very good. It was a, a sweet, sour taste. Okay. Yeah. So these are some of the things that I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I had a horse. Mm -hmm. I was I was given a horse by my uncle, mm -hmm. uh, from my uncle, and uh, he was a beautiful quarter horse. He had uh, a red coat and long black tail and had a long um, uh, mane. Mm -hmm. And he had a white slash down the middle of his head. Mm -hmm. And my watching uh, you know, cowboy movies, uh, I fell in love with the name Trigger. Mm -hmm. So I named him Trigger. Okay. And Trigger was like a pet. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Keith Apples one pears, you know, sometimes some sugar cubes, and he would love that as a treat. And I would ride him bareback like an Indian. And being a quarter horse, he could really run. He could get up to about 45 miles an hour. And that's cutting the wind, that's cutting the, cutting the tears out of your eyes, you know. But uh, I enjoyed every minute. And uh, we had uh, my neighbors had dogs, and they would chase us. And sometimes they would spook him. Mm -hmm. They would wait till he get up on him, and he would he would just come to a stop. Mm -hmm. And I went over his head. Yeah. I could have broke my neck, yeah. but I held on to the reins. Okay. And the reins was really what kept me mm -hmm. on my feet and right in front of him, mm -hmm. and I kissed him on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was, I was looking for something to throw at that dog, that dog was, uh, he would hide, and all of a sudden he'd just come out at you. <laughs> and uh, uh, that spooked him, you know, and he yeah. would just stop. Yeah. On a dime. Yeah. Yeah. Because he skid a little bit, but he would stop. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that could be trouble for the rider. Yeah. Especially if you don't, you're not riding in a saddle. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just bareback. Yeah. You know, you just come right over his head if you're not prepared for it. And uh, that was in a time I kind of reflect on when I could have broke my neck, you know. Uh, then we had, uh, we had uh, neighbors. And uh, everybody was kind of kind of close, you know. And, uh, you know, you could say it was like a village. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, uh, one of my one of my teachers' name was Claude Adams, and he had a father, and he lived in that neighborhood, mm -hmm. and he had a lot of turkeys. And I was hard by those turkeys because the, the males, you know, they were, uh, they were like, uh, they were aggressive. Mm -hmm. And they, they would share those, the, the back of their, their feathers mm -hmm. like a fan. And then they would kind of charge you. Yeah. And, and we'd have to turn around and run. It was, it was kind of frightful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, those were fond memories. Mm -hmm. yeah, we, uh, during the summer months, we would pick plums and blueberries, blackberries, mm -hmm. and we would bring them home. My mother would uh, make a blueberry pie, mm -hmm. and then she would do a lot of canning. And so she uh, she canned a lot. She used uh, peaches, you know. Uh, Plums, uh, apples, apple juice. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I, she would use the mason jars, mm -hmm. and they had the um, the little uh, top with the rubber, mm -hmm. and you, you would put some kind of a uh, substance on it would make it stick. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that uh, she didn't 
use that on one of the jars. And so when the, uh, the, the, uh, the apple juice would ferment and it would turn to cider, and uh, nobody was home but me and my brothers. And we uh, get the rambling and, uh, and we could we could smell the cider, and it smelled interesting. And we pulled it out, and it popped right open, and we drank all that cider, got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> My mother came on. She said, "What's wrong with you all? Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, something is wrong. You must have got in the, that apple juice. Mm -hmm. It turned to cider. Mm -hmm. It fermented. Yeah. yeah. So those are some of the things that uh, I remember and fondly mm -hmm. remember. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. it was like it was nothing like growing up in the country. Yeah. You know, um, you would, go a lot of places barefoot. You yeah. Know? And, uh, How long were your grandparents neighbors of your parents? Oh, until we were, until uh, we, we were grown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Do you remember which uh, grandparent uh, just died first? Mm -hmm. Do you remember which grandparent died first? Uh, my grandfather died. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then my grandmother, she uh, she passed um, sometimes after. Okay. Yeah. Um, was he sick with anything, or he just older age? He was old age, mm -hmm. and I think he had a few complications. We can want one of them because he smoked a lot. You yeah. Know? Okay. So um, that probably contributed to cancer. Yeah. You know. But she, uh, my grandmother, she was, um, she was part Choctaw Indian mm -hmm. and part Black people. Mm -hmm. And she had her own remedies, mm -hmm. you know. Um, she would, uh, she had long hair mm -hmm. and she had that uh, uh, leathery type skin. Mm -hmm. and, and um, when she, when she and Grandpa, she took, they took a picture together, and he looked like she looked like a squaw, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Indian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, she never did uh, have any problems with her teeth mm -hmm. because she would use um, um, uh, a twig mm -hmm. from a uh, like a lemon tree mm -hmm. uh, or. Uh, Let's see, well, mostly lemon, lemon trees, mm -hmm. and she was just, you know, take care of the tea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and uh, um, and that helped to that helped her to create uh, saliva, mm -hmm. and uh, it was something about the saliva that prevented you from getting ginger gingivitis. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, these were some of the remedies that. Uh, you know, she inherited and she carried it with her until yeah. until death. And I think um, I think she had she had real thick varicose veins, mm -hmm. and and uh, I think probably uh, the cause of her death was probably one bursting, oh, gotcha. and so she she would bleed naturally. Yeah. But uh, she didn't have to go to the doctor. They didn't believe in going to doctors. Right. Yeah. Um, Do you know how your grandparents met? Did you ever hear that story? Um, I'm not quite sure how okay. they met. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, they didn't discuss. Right. Those things. Well, they didn't give us any history on, on that. Okay. It was like. Um, you know, parents, grandparents, you know, they would have a, a, a historical share with their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my father didn't talk about how they met. Okay. You know? And uh, I know my mother probably had some idea, you know, how they met, but uh, they didn't discuss that, okay. that part of it. 
Now, these grandparents are your mother's parents or your father's parents? These are my father's parents. Father's parents, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, my mother's maiden name was Briley. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of cousins, mm -hmm. Briley cousins. And, uh, and my, uh, uh, my, my grandfather, you know, he, he kind of sold vinyls, okay. you know. So we have a large family okay. and uh, outside children. Children, yes. But um, they were, um, they knew we were family. Mm -hmm. and they did a lot of work for my grandfather. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, when we were uh, quite young, my grandfather, grandfather would take us to school in a wagon, mm -hmm. you know. And the kids would try to tease us, you know, because most people drop drop the kids off in cars. Right. But my grandparents, it was kind of old fashioned, mm -hmm. and uh, and they were well known, mm -hmm. especially my grandfather. And uh, he had acquired quite a bit of land, mm -hmm. and I think he got cheated out of some of his land mm -hmm. by some of the crooked lawyers down there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And so I would hear. Uh, uh, stories about that. Um, uh, I think he was on the school board. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a lot of prestige. Right. Yeah. So um, that was a lot of respect in, in that regard. Mm -hmm. You know, simply because you know he had acquired so much right. as as he was uh, going through mm -hmm. uh, the years. Okay. Yeah. So I believe that was kind of a little jealousy there, you know, mm -hmm. uh, among the school board. Mm -hmm. And you, you would hear kind of hear stories, you know. Uh, sometimes people walk around griping and want to, you know, and you catch on, you know. But uh, they just, just, they just didn't sit down and just really tell us about, you know, how uh, grandpa became like a, um, I can't think of the term. I'd say, uh, well, like uh, any other uh, renaissance. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So That's he, good. He, 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 he had acquired a lot of land. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, kind of beaten out of some of it, you know. Yeah. And we heard that much. So, uh, and, and a lot was, uh, a lot of the land had timber. Uh -huh. um, it was still on. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Timber. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. And a, a lot of the land had timber. Mm -hmm. And timber was a, um, a, was a, a commodity that uh, sold uh, greatly. Yes. Uh, back in those days. Mm -hmm. So uh, well, I think he was uh, taken advantage of, mm -hmm. beaten out of it. Yeah. I don't know uh, what the transactions were, mm -hmm. uh, how much money he had acquired from it, you know, but he lost a lot of land. And I'm sure that they didn't give him the proper amount of money that it was worth. Right. You know. So being, uh, you know, lawyers, you know, uh, educated, and they can be crooked. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They can take advantage of you. Okay. Um, and I remember um, uh, growing up um, in the South, we had um, we had uh, snowstorms, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we had to wrap our our uh, pipes mm -hmm. because uh, our house set on bricks, mm -hmm. and so um, you, it, you, could have, you could go underneath and wrap the pipes mm -hmm. uh, with. Uh, The rags or whatever you could find mm -hmm. uh, to, to keep everything from freezing, mm -hmm. and uh, we would have uh, 
from how we experience ice storms, just like they had down in, uh, recently down in uh, mm -hmm. Texas. Mm -hmm. So you had to have your pipes wrapped uh, so you could, uh, so the gas would freeze. Yeah. And, and we would let our, our stove burn real low all night. All night, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it kept it pretty comfortable. You yeah. Know, you could sleep. And uh, we had to, um, and we, we, we drank well water, mm -hmm. which was, uh, well water was like ice water. Mm -hmm. So if you went out about 30, 30, 40 feet, and you could stream, mm -hmm. and that water came out real fresh mm -hmm. and good. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> and so my, my, grand, my uh, grandfather, he was, uh, he was kind of like a jack of all trades, and my uh, father inherited a lot of those. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he would uh, dig wells, you know, for uh, neighbors and, and other people. And, uh, and it was pretty lucrative, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, my father, you know, he was, uh, uh, he could dig wells. He inherited that uh, skill mm -hmm. from, my, from my grandfather, being the oldest son. Mm -hmm. And he would, uh, in his spare time, he would dig wells, him and his uh, friends. And, uh, and we would come along and just watch him, you know, and help, you know, anything we could handle, you know, it wasn't too strenuous, you know, mm -hmm. we would help out, help out, you know. So, and the way he, uh, he would find water was with a wicker. Oh, okay. You know? And that happened to be, uh, it, it, it was a, um, like a thick switch that was uh, long, yeah. like, a, like a fishing pole. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he would hold it out mm -hmm. and he would move around with it. And all of a sudden, the, the tip of the whipper would be just, yeah. just tell them just where to dig. That was amazing. Yeah. It was like magic. Yeah. And and they found water. Mm -hmm. And usually they would have to go down about 30, 30 feet, you know, 25, 30 feet. Mm -hmm. And you could hear the water. They would pull the, pull the dirt out. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it was uh, clay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, you had fresh water. And uh, and it's nothing like drinking fresh water just coming from the, the uh, deep earth. Mm -hmm. It was cool and it was fresh and it was pure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I found that to be pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Then my father, you know, he was a uh, he was kind of like a jack of all trades because he cut hair. Mm -hmm. He was like a barber. And so it was a natural type of uh, ability he had. Mm -hmm. And he would cut all of his friends, and he would cut their friends' children's hair. Mm -hmm. And uh, right out on the front porch, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I found that to be interesting. So it was a lot of interesting, interesting things that uh, uh, our parents were involved in. And I, I kind of picked up on Bob. You know, right now I, I work as a barber. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to school for cosmetology, but I turned out you know, I wanted to be a barber. Mm -hmm. and so I've been cutting now for over thirty years. You know, so I've had steady clientele, mm -hmm. and a lot of them uh, you know, they're kind of staying in because of the pandemic, uh, COVID nineteen. And then there are some that, that are still kind of mm -hmm. come out to see if you're working. Mm -hmm. So um, um, we know that uh, a lot of the beauty salons and barbershops were closed because mm -hmm. of the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you go into these places, they're full of people. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't too, 
that wasn't too swift, yeah. you know, for people to take a chance. Yeah. But we um, wore our mask, mm -hmm. we wear our masks, and we remind them, our customers, wear your mask, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we do the elbow bump, we don't yes. shake hands, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, the barbershops are interesting places to be. It's kind of like an institution within itself. Because you would have people coming through that uh, they had all kinds of skills. And um, I met one gentleman. Uh, he was a, uh, he was like a, he was like an ambassador or something, you know, because he traveled worldwide. Mm -hmm. and. He shared a story with me, and I think he was, I forget where he was, but he was overseas, and, mm -hmm. and I think he was in a country, or maybe similar to India somewhere, mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and as soon as he, he said, as soon as he opened his mouth, he knew he was American. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, at that time, I can't think who was the uh, president at that time. You know, this was a pretty good time back in back, back in history there. But uh, you didn't see you know, a lot of blacks, you know, um, traveling, right. you know, because of uh, you know, uh, in a business type sense, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he has some stories, you know. They. Uh, People were really surprised, you know, because here in America, you know, um, you know, discrimination is prevalent mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. and so um, blacks didn't get, you know, particular jobs, you know, um, mm -hmm. I guess at the time, and so he was kind of special. Mm -hmm. But he, he was like an ambassador. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I could come up with. Mm -hmm. But he was uh, he was uh, he was very proper, um, um, well spoken. Mm -hmm. You know, he talked like a businessman, mm -hmm. and it was fascinating. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, he told me a lot of things I should have written down. You know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, he said everyone he met, you know. He they were surprised to see him as a black man traveling uh, for someone from the United States or representing the United States. So I always call him, I said, he looked like an ambassador. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, was, do you remember generally what year this was? Um, I'd say this was back in the early 90s. Okay. Yeah. So looking at your timeline, uh, you came to Oakland in 1968, mm -hmm. and um, that was kind of during the time of the Black Panthers. Did yes, you, yes. Did you, how yeah. did you feel about the Black Panthers? Oh, I thought they were fascinating, mm -hmm. uh, especially Angela Davis. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a college professor, I think, uh, major was psychology, I'm not sure. And uh, Huey Newton, got a chance to meet him. Um, very articulate person. Uh, um, uh, very, um, he was like a very determined type person, very, um, I think very um, cautious and deliberate in his speech, and uh, um, I that was a club they used to go to. It was a real popular club called the Lamp Post in Oakland, and uh, they would a lot of those the Black Panthers would uh, gather there. Uh, they had home cooking there. Um, they had entertainment, and it was kind of close-knit, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very unique and very nice, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, there was never any problems. You know, everybody, everybody got along well, you know. And they shared some stories, you know. Uh, and I think uh, the Eldridge Cleaver was, uh, uh, he was connected with I think he was, uh, uh, Chicago, Midwest. Uh, not sure, but, uh, but uh, they they uh, they spoke about him, and uh, it, they they said very very good things about him. But uh, they were a uh, you know they was you know freedom fighters. And I think they were, um, they were interested in, you know, education, especially for young blacks. And I think they raised money to, uh, you know, to, uh, in case people didn't have, uh, didn't get any breakfast, because there was a lot of poor people, they would, they would give them breakfast before they went to school. And I thought that was really nice. So it was um, it was very interesting because they were, you know, they were looking out for black people, you know. So um, I think they were harassed by the police department, you know, uh, this whole, uh, you know, general purposes, you know. Uh, harassment, you know. So I think they went through a lot. Uh, so it was uh, it was interesting and pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody was sporting the Afro, black leather jackets, and everybody looked like a black panther, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I know uh, once uh, me and my cousin was pulled over. And, uh, I was just partying, you know. And uh, I think uh, my one of my signal lights weren't working. And uh, it was this brown, gersey colored uh, police car was right behind us. And put his lights on us, you know. And I think uh, uh, my cousin, we were sipping on some gin some vodka or something. And uh, so the, the uh, cop was uh, white and his partner was Japanese. And so they was questioning us, you know, where we were coming from. And uh, we told them, you know, try to be truthful. Coming from a party, you know, and on our way home. So I was driving and so he said, you know, they, he, he asked uh, uh, my cousin if he had uh, alcohol on his breath. He had been drinking. He said, yeah, been drinking. He says, um, uh, the uh, Japanese policeman, I was kind of worried about him because he get, had gotten a stance with his weapon aimed right at us. Mm -hmm. I said, hey, tell your friend, your partner, be careful with that piece, you know. So we're, you know, we're not uh, making any problems or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. They're just cooperating with you. And, uh, and I think he, he appreciated that. And he said, well, we're going to let you go. But you're going to, you tell your cousin to drink the rest of that stuff. And he turned it on you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I thought that was uh, kind of hilarious. Mm -hmm. He laughed about it, you know, afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we, had, uh, we had a few confrontational moments, mm -hmm. you know, just because of the way we looked, you know. Mm -hmm. We were all wearing afros and stuff, you know, so we looked black panther, black panthers, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, and I think on those bases, they would kind of pull you over just to see who you are mm -hmm. and what are you doing on the streets, you know, because mm -hmm. it was late. So I thought that was really interesting.
uh, episode in our, mm-hmm. in our lives, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I try to be as, as uh, um, I was direct and I was very uh, uh, respectful, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I spoke up to them, you know, and didn't stutter about anything, you know. Mm-hmm. Just told them the truth, mm-hmm. you know. And I think the uh, policeman appreciated that. Okay. Yeah. And so he let us go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So those are some of the things that I went, went through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, Is there more you'd like to tell us about your journey? My journey? Uh huh. Through just through your life experiences uh-huh. or in relationship to your parents or grandparents or yourself? Well, um, I mean... Do you, did you ever tell us how many children you have? I have, have one. Just one? Just one. Oh, just one. One son. One son. Yes. Okay. Yes. And do you have grandchildren? No. No? no okay. No grandchildren. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's your uh, well, I'm, I'm married to her. I remarried. And so my wife, she has children and grandchildren. Okay. And uh, she's Filipina. Uh-huh. And, uh, the children are really sweet. Uh-huh. And they refer to me as Lolo. Okay. That means grandpa. Okay. In, in, uh, in Tagalog. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And they're all sweet kids. All right. And so uh, they love me very much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. All right. What is your son's name? Uh, Lon Aaron. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and does he know stories from about your grandparents or your parents? No, no? he's not familiar okay. with. My so this would be like talking to him, and he'll be able to mm-hmm. see this and say, "Oh, yeah. learn something about his family." Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us uh, in the spirit of sharing um, your history? Um, mm-hmm. Your people, what they stood for, what they lived for, uh, kind of thing? Nothing really special. Uh, um, my mother mm-hmm. you know, worked as a uh, Whites mm-hmm. and uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of a proper name to give her her status there. But she was like, uh, you know, a domestic? Like domestic. Okay, yeah. It's like a domestic worker. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, uh huh. So my mother went through some changes because of racism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she spoke, she spoke up and out uh, about it. Mm-hmm. And I remember one uh, episode with her and this uh, this uh, white lady. She owned a she was a own florist, and they kind of disrespected her. And my mother, I was with her. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a uh, you know about. 17 at the time, and, uh, and I, she had a bone to pick with, her name was Mrs. Brainy, mm-hmm. and she owned a, a nice florist uh, shop, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, what city? In Texarkana. Texarkana, okay. And uh, she went in to get her money, and, and, and I think she kind of demanded and they did not like that, especially when other whites were there. Mm-hmm. And I guess they looked upon her as, what is this slave woman doing talking to a white woman like this? Mm-hmm. And uh, she and my mother, or well, my mother and Mrs. Rainey, they had a loud argument. Mm-hmm. She said, you give, my, give me my money and we will part our ways. Mm-hmm. You will not have anything else.
much to do with me. And, uh, and I find that to be interesting because uh, it was, she didn't get the respect that she thought she deserved. Mm -hmm. And so she just spoke up and, and, um, and, and it was kind of a punishing kind of thing, you know, because she had had enough, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and it's interesting, when my mother died, all of the rainy children, they provided the place where um, they provided, you know, they provided the flowers and everything that goes with, you know, um, the decorative uh, mode around my mother's casket. Mm -hmm. the beautiful flowers. Mm -hmm. So they were showing their respect to the children. Yeah. So I'm sure they remember that incident too. Mm -hmm. Was that the last that your mom worked for Miss Rainey yes. at that time? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, anything more about your dad you want to share? Mm -hmm. Well, my my father, you know, he, you know, he had outside women, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, uh, he had children outside. Okay. Yeah. And so um, the first time I met my my uh, my half brothers mm -hmm. is when I was visiting, and they found out, you know, uh, we were in town. Mm -hmm. It was me and my sister. Were your parents divorced? No. No, no. They stayed married they stayed the whole married. time until death did yeah. them part. Oh yeah. Excellent. Yeah. 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 And so um, there was a, uh, it was a cafe in Arkansas that, uh, you know, they had good food and um, they sold beer. And uh, so uh, me and my brothers, we were there. And, uh, and guess who walked in? My father's outside, uh, signs, mm -hmm. and we just like looking in the mirror. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we were looking. It's just we like, like mm -hmm. it was like we knew that we were related, you mm -hmm. know. And they were so glad to see us, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they had never met us before, and uh, we were young adults, mm -hmm. and they came up and they embraced us, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was a really nice moment. Yeah. You know? They were yeah. really, really glad to see us. Yeah. And we were glad to see them. Yeah. Know? And we, we spent a lot of time talking, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Did you keep up with them through the years? No. Or? No? Okay. No. And, and uh, whenever this pandemic is over, I'm going to remember them and try to look them up, mm -hmm. you know, to see if they're still around. You know? Did you know the name of the uh, woman who was no, their mother? Never met. Oh, okay. Never met her. All right. Yeah. 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 So that's a branch of your family that's kind of out there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe one day if you get in touch with them, you can maybe. provide a name. Yes. And then your generations can check yes. them out. Yes. <laughs> and probably got children. I'm yes. Sure they do, yeah. You know. And I would like to get to know them better. Yes. And get them to meet their offspring. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And just give them all hugs. Yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. All right. So um, today uh, you are still a barber and you are at Gump's Barbershop yes. in San Leandro, correct? Yes. All right. Yeah. So the family uh, legacy kind of mm -hmm. lives on mm -hmm. in you. Yeah. Um, so is we, your son we, a, a barber or no, he's does a he work with his worker. hands? Oh, he's a social worker. Yeah. Okay. He yeah. works with his brains. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Which is another trait that your grandfather left yes. because yes. he was a man of many mm -hmm. talents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, um, um, something I was going to say, but it slipped my mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. 
Well, um, I can't think of any more questions. If you don't have anything more that you'd like to share. No, not at the moment. Oh, but I know. Give us one thing that you would like uh, future generations of men in your family to know um, that maybe your father or grandfather stood for. But... Mm -hmm. um, or even your my, my, my grandfather. I, um, I remember one of uh, my grandfather's uh, sons had, had bought him a television. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and back in those days, you saw a lot of cowboys and Indian movies. Mm -hmm. And you know that the cowboys won oh, all of the affairs. Mm -hmm. And that made my grandfather angry. And he told him to cut that thing off. Mm -hmm. And so he, he didn't like, because he was married to an Indian woman. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, she had a lot of, uh, she had a lot of uh, Indian blood. And so uh, he didn't appreciate looking at stuff like that. Mm -hmm. you know? So that, um, that struck me as, you know, mm -hmm. Grandpa was, uh, he, he didn't like doing what, you know, they would show uh, mm -hmm. you know, on television. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because most kids would imitate what they saw on television, mm -hmm. playing cowboys and Indians. Mm -hmm. And so he, uh, he really, that made him upset, you know, mm -hmm. so I was really kind of surprised. Mm -hmm. and. And, and I appreciated him, uh, uh, you know, throwing a tantrum about that. Mm -hmm. He told me to cut that thing off. Mm -hmm. Find another station. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut it off. Yeah. You didn't want to watch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I can't think of anything else right now, but maybe in the near future I can, you know, okay. you know. Pull up some things that I might be able to add. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. You're All quite right. welcome. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let's